Tonight, under a thinly veiled cloak of darkness, the shadows envelop the power hour. And one man, one man alone, can provide the light as we enter the shadows of the Super Wrestlers. Welcome into the Power Hour. I'm Steve, along with C-Red, along with Real Deal Rion Skills. And joining us once again, certainly one of our favorite guests. Uh, and it must mean it's Super Wrestlers time because we like to talk with him right around that time. The architect of, the, or one of the architects of the Super Wrestlers, the one, the only, the legend, you know him, you love him, Billy Wack. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Wack. Hello, everyone. With an intro like that, it's a lot of pressure to uh, to 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 be entertaining for this. My God, you really hyped me up there. There is uh, never been a time where I've encountered you, whether on Zoom or live, where you have been anything but thoroughly entertaining. So your modesty is sickening, quite frankly. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. But here we go. Um, so episode four. Now, back... Last year, when this started, when it was the original night of the super wrestlers, yes, did you? I mean, obviously, you hope, and everybody that goes into this and does this hopes that you know it will go on and on and on forever. But realistically speaking, did you think that you would make it all the way to episode four with plans for many more? Uh, no, because originally it was a one night eight man tournament. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so to actually be doing this with you guys, like probably almost a year later uh, and having three shows under our belt and going to a fourth is uh, is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, we have uh, been fortunate enough to be with you on this journey vicariously since its inception. We had you on before the first show, had you on before the second show. We gave you a break and brought Rydor from another dimension uh, for the third show. And now here you are back again for the fourth show. We feel tremendously connected to the super wrestlers. And we are proud of that fact because we knew that first night, what the potential was for this and you have not disappointed. So on behalf of this show and all of us, congratulations on making one of the most interesting wrestling products that is happening right now in, in, in wrestling today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the fact that guys like you are enjoying it, it means message received. It's, it's This is exactly what we were trying to do. You know, make something fun that people will care about and uh, keep talking about. So, so thank you guys. How do you not enjoy wizards and vampires and brothers in arms from other dimensions and monsters and, 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 business puppies whatever that means uh <laughs> you know, pubic mooses i mean the the characters you know we we talk when we talk about it you know it, it it's goes back to the wwe days where the characters were in some cases hideously outlandish but there's just something about that concord music theater and a character as outlandish as pubic moose that just works so beautifully and you have never seen a crowd more vested in pubic hair anywhere that isn't uh, conducting triple X adult entertainment. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it was a, it's a combination of two funny words that sound funny together. And now he's a, uh, a super wrestler, superstar. He is a fan fan. I don't know. I guess he's a fan favorite. Well, he's I mean, he's got the hot potato belt and just the fact that the hot potato championship uh, has returned uh, from wherever it was being held is just it's it's so wonderfully nostalgic I mean there's so much going on at super wrestlers that you recognize and feel from past days but yet it's so new and has so many interesting and creative edges you know robotic referees uh you know the prize in and of itself is is something that you know just isn't out there and being done I'd like to say, where do you come up with this stuff? But I almost don't want to know. I almost want you to keep your, your recipe for success under your hat because I, I don't think I want to know how this is being done. I'm just glad that it is. I come up with it. I mean, it just happens. These it things just are, happens. It's, these it's, things it's, are it's, real events that happen. Uh, we hearken back to that first show in which you said, don't suspend disbelief, believe everything 
Yeah. Once you gave those marching orders, it changed everything. And I'll never forget that. You know, there are certain moments in wrestling that you that stick with you. Because, you know, you, you watch wrestling on television and, you know, they, they try to keep everything reality-based. This could possibly happen, et cetera, et cetera. And you're like, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Believe in everything. Believe that everything around you is exactly what it is. And that makes it even more enjoyable. Where, where did, what made you want to say that? What, what about that scenario made you want to give that, uh, that kind of public service announcement at episode one? Because I know going into it that that it is there are robots and wizards and here comes a dragon and there's another other planets and time travel whoa all that stuff, uh, so in a, in an almost preemptive way to defend yourself from someone who is a complete traditionalist, I'm not gonna watch that garbage. Those guys and the little guy from another planet. It's not my pro wrestling. Look, it's not your pro wrestling. It's not, uh, but it's but it is pro wrestling. It's just, we just, we just went in this direction, you know, it, it, we're the crazy division, the interplanetary division or something like that. Leave us alone. Let us do our thing. We know when you get those traditionalists, uh, that are like, that's not my, my wrestling was this and that, and they can cut this heartfelt promo about what wrestling really is, but it's subjective to the person, what wrestling is. And if a guy is cutting that promo about how wrestling is really serious and real, surprise, it really isn't that either. So don't come at me and tell me that, whoa, my pro wrestling, everybody's pro wrestling is everybody's pro wrestling. Everybody do your thing. It is 100% subjective to who you are and what you like. Uh, But uh, wrestling, people seem to forget wrestling is an art form. And the key word in that is art. All art is subjective. If you look at, let's just take the Mona Lisa, one of the, said to be one of the greatest paintings ever. I might see it and just see, okay, it's just a a portrait of a chick sitting there. Like, (laughs) I really might not get it. You know what I'm saying? But there might be this abstract next to it that I'm like, oh, this this painting is great. Right. You know, music. Music is art. People seem to forget that. You know. I you know, uh, I like country. People freak out when I tell them that. But I'm like, because it's art. So there's something about a particular song that gets into my my veins. So when it comes to Super wrestlers is totally subjective. And here's why I loved it. I used to work for a company that was similar. A little similar, but the difference is all of super wrestlers is all about these list of guys. It's nothing else. Is you know you don't have a uh, a fourth match where it's uh, two guys locally and you know they're you know they're just out there and they're just wrestling because right. you no no these are just total everybody is so much their character that. Like you said, how can you not believe? And for me, to know the ins and out of this business, to sit there and be like, I don't have to announce, I don't have to commentate, I don't have to wrestle. I can just sit back and be entertained. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people. Well, people is- read about wrestling because they they will they will take you to task. And they'll do it with music too, you know, because uh, everyone wrestling, especially, is like this competitive thing. What's your company doing, or what are these guys doing, or whatever? I don't subscribe to that. I don't care about that. Interpromotional stuff will never happen because we're not on Earth, you know. Like, so I don't look at it as like wrestling, yeah. as I look at it like super wrestlers, and it is just that 
intellectual property, and that's that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> Super but wrestling is not invading AAW anytime. No, no, no. But again, to the main point, I just wanted to let people know, like, don't sit there with your arms folded. Oh, a robot referee. And I want you to be like, there's going to be a robot referee. Get ready, you know? So just just relax and believe it. You know? Because it's uh, it, it's real. Here, here he comes. That head is metal. People get shocked. That's real. All of that is real. I'm seeing it right in front of me. He got hacked right in front of us all. You know? Again, Steve asked you earlier, you know, where all of this comes from. And I've known Billy Wack for so many years. I'm I'm of the mindset that I don't want to know because everything you do has always, always been methodical, planned out, and borderline insanity genius. Like, you cannot, I've never left anything you've ever done and say, oh, it was all right. <laughs> uh, I wasted my time. I'm I'm sure there's been some I've, there's been no. some somewhere. <laughs> no, not not for me, not for me. Well, thanks. Every every, every thanks. time I've spent money, I've left there knowing I got way more than what I paid. Thank you, way buddy. more. Except for the beers, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Hey. But, mm-hmm. Well, hey, we won't talk about that. Right. <laughs> you, you mean this delicious beer? This this delicious, not sponsoring the Power Hour, but this is a super wrestler sponsor. So good taste in beer, good taste in wrestling. Uh, that kind of goes hand in hand to me. Um, I tell people, you know, people say, you know, I get it all the time when, uh, hey, are you going to check out this show this weekend? No. You're going to go over here. Hey, uh, you know, there's something happening at Allstate Arena this weekend. I, I'm good. Uh, I've told people regularly when they ask me, the only wrestling show that I will spend and make a financial commitment to is the Super Wrestlers. And I think the reason, I think I've, I've, I've thought about this enough, and I wanted to be able to quantify it because I don't think I've, in, in the installments we've had previously, I haven't, you know, I'm just amazed by it. I haven't been able to quantify why. What makes me want to go see it where I will spend money to go see it? And I think it is become, to me, like if I go to a concert or a movie and I want to get away from where I'm at, my headspace, and I go to a movie or I go to a concert, That's the level that I think this has gotten for me, at least in my life, in my experience, because I know as soon as I traverse all the stairs upward into the arena, which I I think it's, it's actually, if you look at it, you know, I'm now starting to catch on to this whole thing. The stairs, if you, if you notice when you're walking up the stairs of the Concord Music Theater, there's this moment, I don't know if you guys remember the $6 million man. And the Bigfoot <laughs> episode where it had the tunnel that would spin. And oh, go yeah. and this. The stairwell has kind of got that vibe going on. So I think that that's kind of like this wormhole thing. And we end up in this different place. And I think once I get in there, it's like I, I breathe. And I'm like, <sighs> whatever was in my headspace you know, oh, I'm going to go here tomorrow and do this. I'm next weekend. I'm going to drive five hours to Wisconsin to do this, or, you know, I'm going to go here, there, and I'm going to have to do this for two hours on the nose every time with four intermissions, mind you, I am just there. And I am, I'm, I'm, I'm so open to the experience that I'm watching. And it's like watching a good movie or watching a satisfying music concert. Because, you know, if you're at a bad concert, you know, that'll affect you too. If the movie sucks, that'll affect you too. But it's like a good distraction from reality. And I think that is 
why I like it so much. And I think that's why everybody that I talk to likes it so much because it's just so different and nobody else is doing it. And you do see things that you don't necessarily see at other places. Uh, if that's what you're going for, then that's Babe Ruth. That, that, you just called your shot. There it goes. Well, and, and the trick back to like what you said, it's that staircase. The shows aren't even that good. We just get people so tired out by the time that you don't, they don't want to leave. So It's just... the altitude, right? A little lightheaded. Yeah, yeah. It's a trick. It's I'm, a trick. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still sticking with the, the, the spinning tunnel of the $50 <laughs> dollar man because I always wanted to go in it. Hearing that noise. Hey. Listen, I'll tell you this. When I was a kid, I used to run around my backyard in slow motion and my neighbors thought there was something wrong with me. But that's a story <laughs> for a whole other time. And that's a whole other therapy session. Who didn't? Who didn't? I know. That's you know, it's just but that's what we did when we were kids. And and you sang the song while you did it. Da -na 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 -na. I still I still watch it at least twice a week because I just can't get I can't I can't shake my Lee Majors addiction. But again, oh that's a whole other therapy session. And, you know, I'll, I'll mix in the fall guy. I'm equal opportunity. I'll, I'll go. I'm them. They I'll go both ways. Oh when it comes to, you when know it comes what? To... Here. You brought up the intermission. And I think this is that is another. Like, how many times? Like, we just did a show Saturday. That was the longest intermission and, I've ever seen. And it was intermission. Where, where were you going? What was Saturday? Oh, that was uh, no, at your old stomping grounds oh, at St. Okay, Joe right. Park. Okay. And the house that Billy built. I, I mean, you I, know, I, I see there, people, but... some people, they're talking. When I was at Super Wrestlers, everybody was talking, but everybody was talking about what had just taken place. Like they're not talking about. Yeah, hey, uh, are we, you know, so are we set to go out or what are we doing afterwards? Or, no, everybody was just talking about, uh, did you see the vampire and then Shogun spit, put holy water because he blessed blessed a cup of water? Like, people were talking about that stuff. And it was like, oh, this shit's cool. I was checking the this floor to see if it really was lava because you know it, it got kind of hot and I'm like Jesus Christ where where the where they put the lava and I even you know again when you're around the area for so long you see the regular fans you know fans from different but you you've seen them so but I seen so many people that I had never encountered before yeah. and. It was like we were all one big happy family, and we were we were talking to people we didn't even know. It was like, that yeah, was that so was cool. Did you so see it? And it crowd. was like, <laughs> like I think it is everything. It is everything that takes place in the ring. Everything that takes place out the ring. The atmosphere. It like like Steve said, if if you got a bad day. Go to Super Wrestlers because you will totally forget about it. Because if you go in there with the mindset, I'm just here to be entertained and see what happens. Oh shit, you you're getting your money's worth and then some. Like so, if anybody's watching, which maybe they will, maybe they won't. You don't know. Um, and you're on the line thinking, uh, should I go? Go. I promise you, go, go. Be there. I'll, more reasons. There's, I'll more be reasons. There. there's more reasons. There's more reasons. There. Everybody says in the city you can't park. That's bullshit. It's we free parking park. on Sunday. It's free parking, way. and the parking lot is massive. And it's within 25 steps of the door of the Concord Music Theater. So if you're worried about like parking and having to pay for parking and having to walk a long distance, you don't. So that's not an excuse. It's easy to get to. It's right off the expressway for the most part. So it's pretty easy to get to. And, uh, you know, th the beer is cold, the action is hot, and uh, there's all kinds of crazy shit that goes on there. So, I mean, that, that's what, what, what more do you want in a night? Free parking, good entertainment, cold drinks. It, it's, it just, it writes itself. It writes itself. So here we are. It's the shadows of the super wrestlers. So let's get a little bit into what might be happening. Rion has put up 
uh, some of the graphics for what's to come. Yeah. Um, Vlad Bladder, who has been a fixture, and uh, you know, I certainly love Shogun and I love Ryor and I love all the characters. But you know, when you're a wrestling fan, you always have that one character. You know, when I was a kid, Hulk Hogan, as I got a little older, The Rock, as I got a little older, it was th this guy, that guy. You always pick your favorite wherever you go. Mentor. Right, man. Exactly. <laughs> Isaac Yankum, if that was your cup of tea back in the day, right? Um, Vlad Bladder is my guy at the Super Wrestlers <laughs> because I want him to turn, I want him to start biting the crowd. I want to have a vampire <laughs> invasion or wow. a vampire rock concert because the dude comes out, there's dancing druids. So I feel like we've got a whole, uh, a whole vampire ABBA thing that, that could happen at any time. <laughs> well, well, uh, I, I say this every time I say this, and especially to you guys, I say this every time I feel like a parent right around Christmas time, <laughs> because I know what the kids are getting for Christmas and I hope they like it. But I know what y'all are getting for Christmas, so uh, <laughs> that's why we don't want to know anything. We're just yeah. going to talk about it for the for for the hour, and then <laughs> send you on your ways till we see you on Sunday. But it also, Vlad Bladder's got a shot at the prize. Yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, and there was a he, there was a commercial where he's talking about what uh, what he would do with the prize. Apparently, if he gets the prize, he can go out in the sun, and he could probably he probably won't have to bite people anymore, and like he could probably live a chill life. Uh, I don't know if that means like he would suddenly age, like if it would really make him human, because he does seem to have some immortality. He's 117. That's old. You know? He's a Even teen by our standards. Vampire, he's a vampire, teen vampire. So, uh, so he's after the prize, and uh, as we found out, like literally anything can happen. I mean, who'd have thought that Rydal would have it? Who'd have thought he would have infected Nexus the robot and worked his way into the like? Oh, it's crazy. Like who would have even thought? So. Literally anything can happen. And it always does. And now it, it's a championship match that has many interesting quandaries because obviously Rydal has the prize and Ryor hot on his trail for the shenanigans on their home world, which we haven't heard a lot about, but I'm sure the storm is brewing. And uh, I know there are a lot of people that are looking to meet the looking to have audience with the queen. <laughs> the queen has been teased at many shows. Uh, I'm not looking for you to tell me if the payoff is coming, but I, I have to believe at some point that portal is going to open and the queen by hook or by crook, because something's got to give in the chronicles of uh, Crosternia. I mean, also there's a queen, but I mean, somewhere out there, the king probably, uh, he, does he know what's going on in the civil war between his son? Who knows? So if there's a queen, there's got to still be a king, maybe, out there. Uh, I, I have uh, just started watching a television show called Yellowstone. I typically am late to the party on many things. But as I've been watching it, I've been trying to put super wrestlers into the cast of characters <laughs> that are on Yellowstone. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm trying to, I, I try to understand through this show, you know, how crazy the the family relationship could be. And I, I feel like, you know, at, at any point, w one of the brothers could die. I mean, it, it's it's crazy what could happen when you've got a blood feud going. Now, I've never been in a blood feud. I have brothers and I, I haven't particularly had the desire to, you know, have to, what, what did, what did Ryor say? Thrash him, I believe was the word. Thrash he, him, yeah. Seems pretty, uh, serious uh and it does say shogun and ryor will be in attendance so yeah. god only knows what that means well what i can say is that they've they're they've they've united you know they're a united front against the evil of rydal and cross turnia and whatever and uh they both petitioned to have a prize match and it was denied by rydal who gets the final say and um, he has instead chosen Vlad Bladder, Teen Vampire. So obviously Shogun and and Ryor are going to be there uh, to take umbrage with the the fact that they are not included in the title shot. Huh. So, you know, 
we also have to discuss this because we didn't get a chance to, obviously we haven't talked to you since the last show. Um, the big reveal uh, as at the end, Shogun found himself looking at himself. Yeah. That was disturbing. It was disturbing and enough to distract him so that he lo he lost the prize. He lost to Rydell. What's going on with that? Are there two show? Is this a is this two Dave Hebner's? Is are are we hearkening back to the golden age? What I am surmising from the situation is that, uh, and kind of from what the one Shogun was explaining, it, is that there is some pocket dimension. Like we think of time travel, like Back to the Future, like oh, boom, you're here, you're there, boom, you're here, yo, you, oh, you can mess up the past, or, you, but apparently. There is this pocket dimension where if you're getting pulled out of time, you can figure out a way to stop off in this pocket dimension and maybe communicate with yourself in other timelines. And I think that's what this Shogun was. It was alarming at first. We thought that maybe Catalyst Tambor was Shogun. But now we're starting to see that Catalyst Tambor seems to just be moving the levers around and moving people around in and out of time. This Shogun managed a way to figure out how to stop off and try to communicate with himself. Unfortunately, he did it at a live show and it was jarring enough to cost Shogun the prize. So hey. we're watching a Marvel movie. Okay, that works for me. All right. <laughs> I keep waiting for Haley right. Atwell to pop out of the uh, out of the rafters with a shield, but that's a that's a whole other thing. <laughs> that I just was... want to see somebody from the timeline. That was horribly disturbing. <laughs> and I, I think it's safe so, to say uh, so... nobody saw it coming. And then he was trying to explain that these that he is a time shadow, which is what hang out in this pot get a, a PBR. So yeah, this is this this is a Marvel uh uh <laughs> I'm I'm loving this. Uh, okay, all right. I I want to see what. Ooh, Sunday, come on, Sunday. All right. It's it's gonna be right. here before we all know it. And sneaking in, uh, during the the super wrestler talk is the one and only Cactus Rack. Hello, Rachel. Welcome. Hello, hello. I am mid scarfing down my dinner because we raised right here from the train hello so hello. hello mr billy of the whack good to see your yeah, face well, i mean waiting to see yours you don't want to watch me eat i promise all right <laughs> maybe after i'm done eating we'll let her uh, don't we'll tell her me her what i'm into <laughs> Fair I'm, not. I'm not i'm not uh my apologies um we've got a lot of great <laughs> What happened? Of all the things to get re on, of all the things <laughs> to get re on, I don't know what I missed, but I'm sure it was great. Um, it went right over your head. <laughs> it, 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 I, I, imagine, I imagine it's still going. It's it's probably still going. Um, so we've got quite a few <laughs> interesting <laughs> matches. Uh, let's talk about them. Let's talk about what's happening. I have a feeling my internet is uh, being a little problematic tonight, so I apologize if uh, I think maybe Crosternia is trying to send me a message to stop shooting my mouth off. So if the if the internet is a little wonky, I apologize on behalf of myself. Um, the Porch Pirate is taking oh, on Destructo, definitely. and I know Destructo's got Madam Shatter in his corner, at least he usually does, but they they kind of. Did they steal Business Puppy? I mean, is this a gang now? Is B Business Puppy being held against his will? Uh, we don't know where Business Puppy is. Uh, last we heard, Destructo was taking him because there was a bounty on his head. I don't know if he dropped off, was delivered. I don't know if he's chained to the radiator in the Concord musical. I don't know what's happening with Business Puppy. Um but I, Sunday, I'm just, just saying. That's uh, 
Maybe it's a little inside baseball, but hey, uh, we're still looking for him. We hope he turns up. We've checked all the local dog pounds and such. And it's not really dog park. Well, well, I mean, it was dog park weather over the weekend. Maybe he's out there frolicking as business puppy would. Yeah, like I said, we don't know what Destructo is capable of, but it certainly seems like he's up to no good. And, uh, you know, after suffering the bite in the floor is lava match, we don't know what porch pirate we're going to see. I mean, that's crazy. I know. Uh, he hasn't reported any uh, physical ailments or anything to us so far. So, I mean, he's still a go for this Sunday. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So that 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 in itself is compelling. Um, and then we have, again, the most booed person uh, that is a super wrestler right now has to be USA Hole. And there's Rachel. She She's made a visual appearance. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. See, I still have a face. Okay, don't let me interrupt you. <laughs> it's nice to see you. So we've got USA Hole, uh, especially right now in this political climate, uh, taking on danger mass, which we could we could twist the borders in every which way to make this match very thematic, but we're not going to do it. Um, USA Hole seems like he feels like he's got something to prove. He was a little salty at the last show. He is highly unpredictable. Nobody knows what to make of USA Hole. Who knows? Who knows? Like he had the he had that bird, Al Opisha. Oh, come on! Like yeah, I just I can't. I wanted to know where he got the bird. I mean, USA Hole, believe it or not, is hands down my favorite. He's he's a uh, hands down. I want to know where he got Al Opisha. I, yeah, I don't know. I I, I want to hear more. I want to hear more from the USA Hole. I want to. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him on Sunday. Will uh, alopecia be in attendance I don't on know. Sunday? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, if, if alopecia is there, you better bring some cream. Um, yeah, well, alopecia. And then who knows? Who knows if there's something else that he's... Who who knows? And that's not... I'm not saying... I'm just... I don't know what the USA hole is going to do. He's, he's wild. That guy's wild. Then we have a matchup that I think is one of those matchups that could be a show stealer. You've got the punk rock prince, Jordan Cross, who yep. has been very brash and very, you know, he, he kind of goes against the establishment. Not that we're all very familiar with exactly what the establishment at Super Wrestler is. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a establishment by proxy. But he is raging against the machine, as it were, uh, and he's taking out a fucking wizard, for Christ's sake. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, I don't either, but the hope is that it looks really good. I, I think that, I think the two of those guys should put on a fantastic match. Could be match of the night, my preemptive guess or bet, but, um, but I don't know. I don't know. It just, it seems like that's the most regular match on the show, but even though the one guy is a fucking wizard, so who knows? We don't know what he'll be conjuring. We just still, we just hope he stays away from the light fixtures. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I've seen that 10,000 times over the last month. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's out there. It's, it's been out there. themed and gift and, and all sorts of things. But it's yes, it, it, in the nicest ways. Being a wizard, there was no effect. He just bang, He's and bounced and right off of it. and yeah, mm -hmm. No effect. And and bled magic dust, I'm pretty sure. I, you know, it could have been. We don't know what he bled, but he bled something. But it was it was something to see. And uh, I... I Cactus Rack got into a bit of a verbal altercation with Jordan Cross very early on. So I think she has beef with him. I don't have beef with him. You, 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 you I just right. wanted to name three songs by Extreme Noise Terror. That's he not beef. He couldn't That's do not it. beef. You're questioning his punkness. I am. That's It's fair. It's very fair to question his punkness. I get it, you know. And if he's not on top of it, he's going to have to bone up on his punkness. Yeah, I mean, three Weird. songs by Extreme Noise Terror, three songs by Josie and the Pussycats. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it would be fun if he was a, a boy band fan in the closet and there's some some sort of transformation happened and he came wrestling as the, the Jordan Bieber of the suit. Anyway, there, there are so many oh ways. Oh, my God. It just, would, it just entertains me to think about it. Um, What else can you tell us? Are there any nuggets you can give us about the shadows of the super wrestlers. 
Um, no. <laughs> no. Honesty is the best policy. I, um, I, I hate that because I can see there was something and it came in his mind and then his mind was like, no, I can't say that. Well, I mean, the, the only the only thing that is actually there would be a little nugget is um, so we have this robotic referee, Nexus. And as we found out at the last show, wrestlers can apparently crack into him and 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 get him to put them in matches and stuff. So I think we have a bit of a nexus problem that we might have to address at the show. That is, uh, See, that... if you just used a Roomba, <laughs> right? We wouldn't be here right now, right? It's true. <laughs> what has been most satisfying for you as you're about to do the fourth installment? Uh, of this very entertaining uh, art that I'm going to call it art, just like see this, this entertainment art that you've that that has culminated through wormholes and universes. What is most satisfying for you? Uh, the very fact that I am doing a fourth show is satisfying enough. The fact that it that it continues to go um, also satisfying is you know when I'm messing around editing some of the videos and he literally hearing the audience, you know. And now you could put the headphones on and you can hear right where the person is, you know, depending. Like, so I'm back in that room and uh, it sounds so cheesy. And I'm going to I'm going to say it's Sunday, but literally the fans are the best thing because they're saying all kinds of shit and good, bad or indifferent. Like they're getting it and they're picking up on some of the stuff. And then the stuff they're going on and beyond that. They're predicting what might happen. Like. Like Vlad Bladder, he bites the porch pirate, and immediately everyone's like, "He's gonna be a vampire." I I don't know. I I don't. I, <laughs> I, I guess he's gonna. Maybe he's gonna. I don't know. <laughs> you know. But uh, just the fact that like we can have these conversations, and it, it is a year later, and we're having yeah. these conversations. You know, it was a year ago this time. I was shitting my pants, and I was like, "Well, I hope remember that- you shitting live here on Zoom." We yeah. Remember those days. Like, oh, ooh, thank God it's Zoom. But I, I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know how it was going to go. I thought it, there was there was a chance that it was going to be one and done. And there were there were alternate endings to the show. There was alternate ways we were going to do it. If if it was just going to be one, we were going to kind of wrap it up and give it a happy <laughs> end. And maybe it to be continued. But the way we kept finding out that it was going to go. So we kept doing it, you know. So the first show... Night of the Super Wrestlers, Super Wrestlers Strike Back, Return of the Super Wrestlers has followed a very familiar story arc that we all know so well and we know that you're a fan of uh, just by looking at your walls. Um, (laughs) However, now you've gone to Shadows of the Super Wrestlers and, you know, there might not, it might not everybody understand that reference. reference. Uh, It's very clever. This is the only thing I prepared for. Uh, for the show and you saw it earlier I, I posted a thing look at so so all right i'll fix that so you can kind of up 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 shadows of the empire it was uh 1996 uh this was before the prequels uh i think this was like a kenner thing they came up with the the story in between empire strikes back and return of the jedi right you know and it was this whole fictional thing obviously there weren't there wasn't a movie there was a video game there was a book there was a soundtrack they did the whole thing for this Shadows of the Empire. And again, we were given another date. And instead of going like a prequel direction or a sequel direction, why not go with the Shadows of the Empire and just kind of play with that, you know? And then and then tying it into our own time travel story is also kind of fun. So what could be next? What could be next? I, I think that's my favorite part is trying to figure out what you're going to call the show that comes up next because you know we had, we had talked that this is happening on Mario Day, so we thought maybe you were going to twist off and go to something else, but you held suit. You stayed, uh, you know, in the the Star Wars universe, which I think is a pretty cool thing. But you didn't do it predictably. You went against the grain and a little bit off the canon. But now it's been canonized, so who does it really say? Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> well, can we expect prequels somewhere down the line where we get yes. the story of Ryder oh, well, and Rydal? Well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, but I think that's it's going to happen. I don't think we're going to do like a like 
we're not going to film anything in black and white. You know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> that means prequel or, you know what I mean? But uh, we're going to be, yes, all of that. Okay. All of that. Wonderful. Red, oh, you've been mighty quiet. I do have a nugget. Oh, this is a, oh, crazy a nugget. We want a nugget. Okay. It's okay. Actually, it's actually, um, Ooh, he's come on. Part. He's very conflicted. There will be three new super wrestlers. <gasps> Whoa. On Sunday? Or three, you will see three. There are three new things happening. Three new things. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm not I, I'm not ready for this kind of I, I, I've been tense about this getting ready to go and now I don't I don't know if I can handle who knows I mean, where they are where they'll be what they're there for what they're doing what's happening but I looking at my personnel sheet which is really it's on my hand it's, it's melting <laughs> uh, I'm seeing three things on the sheet that's all that's my nuggets that is my nuggets for you guys we appreciate any nuggets that you can give us it's fantastic um i was looking you know every now and again you will serve up a little bit of history on the interweb and i i've been seeing at least over the last few months some of the old lwf promotional posters <laughs> and you know it's been obviously a while since we've seen them and i i look at them and i read the character names and I can't help, but I don't see similarities, but I go, I go, you know, everything comes from somewhere. Everything is born out of something. And I, I just was looking at this last one that you had up there and I'm like, you know, I wonder if some of these people grew up and became some of these people it's just it's it was just i i had well, there again rian is just right on the 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 freaking screws with yeah, it. yeah he's good um that is a hard laugh that you took just now that i had to go and fix <laughs> well i mean we, we always have to tie in a little <laughs> bit to those three letters when when billy is here because you know one way or another we've all been affected by it so, you know, it's a it's a rallying point of wrestling for everybody that's on this show, at least to a certain degree. Um, I'm not saying that it's the same. It, it certainly isn't. But I just what's happening now and what happening then? I just I just for a moment, just for an inkling went, huh? That's all I'm saying. I'm looking at that flyer and I'm thinking, uh, uh, is it was that 99 2000 something like something like that i'm looking at the small thing up in the corner um that's a quarter of a century ago oh. holy wow and we're alive and we're still doing it and we're still doing it at like a pretty decent level i'd like to think wow that's great uh <laughs> and there's like i think maybe like six names on that flyer that are currently involved in the super wrestlers which I think is is that that's that's the whole point of everything is the fact that it's 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 come around again in just the best of ways. Yeah. Uh, and those guys. Yeah. Two thousand. So. All right. So almost a quarter of a century. And holy shit for the guy. I mean, for me to be on a show 25 years later, I, 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 I just talk and do some shit. But some of the guys are wrestling 25 years later and crazy still good. Like and. You know, I don't know. I've seen guys that have had quicker cups of coffee in the big promotions that have lasted much less than some of these guys. Now, granted, it's not like life on the road. You know, it's different for for indie guys, but still, like twenty five years later is impressive. It a hundred percent impressive, a hundred percent. And uh, again, my first experience <laughs> in independent wrestling of any kind was a Saturday night in Lamont many many years ago. And I did not know what a shopping cart match was until <laughs> in Lamont one Saturday night in my youth. So, you know, that was my first experience. And, you know, I've been doing this in one form or fashion for 11 years. But if I hadn't seen that show, I don't know as I would ever have taken the offer to work at PCW back in 2014. So it's amazing how something you were doing all those years ago has affected so many people in 
the trajectory of their lives. So when I call you a legend, when I say things like that, it, it's true from where I sit because I don't think I would be here doing what I'm doing if I wasn't there watching shopping cart matches and people vaulting off of 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 uh, of uh, balcony areas and things. Uh, you know, it it blows your mind, and you you have to you never forget it. You never forget that first night that you're blown away by something, and then you know, years later, you're still being blown away with it just about every month, which is great. And I thank you for that, sir. Uh, now it's just great to hear that. So I, again, I appreciate that, that, um, and that show in Lamont was, um, probably 98 or something. So that was more than a quarter of a century ago. Holy more God. than a quarter of a, yes, wow. we were much younger men then. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and I was 11. I, I would, I would say I was 15 <laughs> doing those shows. I probably, probably shouldn't have been doing those shows. But the state conviction <laughs> let me through because <laughs> the spectacle uh, was was amazing then. It's even more amazing now. Okay, Red, uh, let's hear some roses. Let's hear something from you <clears throat> about what we're doing heading into the shadows of the super wrestlers. I mean, what is there to say that I have not told Billy on here or publicly to his face? He said everything. Uh, he said it all. <laughs> but I just never get tired of it. I just never get tired. I know. No. Um, <laughs> he, he might. This might be the night he cries. And when C-Red cries, the ratings go up. Oh, my God. I'm not crying tonight. Don't cry. <laughs> um, it's all good. Billy Wack <laughs> is a... The best way I can say it, he is the Paul Heyman of Chicago, um, which is crazy. After Paul Heyman came through Chicago, does that make um, sense? Vince, Sam's the Vince, right? <laughs> I'm, the Vince. I'm the Paul Heyman. Who's the Eric Bischoff? <laughs> and Red's thinking have to, about it. Right? I would have think about that i would have to think about that one. but i mean that in the sense when lwf was created they were so anti-establishment so they went against the grain everybody hated us <laughs> no but so here my problem was trying to get in the business and being told to stay away from LWO. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so you can't tell me to stay away from something. And I don't know why to stay away from it. And all the rumors had surfaced uh, when uh, Willie the Bomb and uh, God, what the tag team and GQ, GQ when, yeah. and they came. <clears throat> And Sam had a fucking fit. Like, and it was the first time I ever heard, you can get fired from indie wrestling. Like, <laughs> it's indie wrestling. You get fired? Okay. Uh, so I was curious. And again, I went, uh, again, the infamous New Jack night, but nobody knew. Uh, so I was thoroughly fucking happy. And then LWF kept kicking ass, and then they slowly moved away. And now we have super wrestlers. And the shit is unbelievable. Like, to me, you, and I've told you this before, you can't put it in that Chicago indie scene. You can't. You can't. Because it's nothing like it's nothing like CSW. It's nothing like Rocket Pro. It's nothing like it's there. There's nothing like this. Well, the, you know what? I, I, I was, it's not out. even Chicago. Now, it's, all these years later, though, if somebody wanted to come work for super wrestlers or whatever, they probably wouldn't get fired. And that is how things have changed. You know what I mean? Like now it's like, 
you want to work over there? <laughs> like it's just it's just different now. So I don't No, because they're trust me. I mean for I me, do, for me, like for I you. Do, yeah, I don't Yeah, but don't there are it. other people I've heard you can't work over there. Wow. Can't work over there. Who is it? Like, okay, who is at war with who now? I don't know anymore. I'm out of it. But like who and I want come on, let's let's talk. Let's who's <laughs> who's fighting with who and why? And why? <laughs> we'll 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 save that conversation yeah. for in person. All right, Sunday. All right. All right. Uh, but trust me, there are we don't people, do that on this show. Okay, all right. There are people that are still for whatever reason they have still heat. Yeah. With people. Yeah. And it's it, so dumb. It's so yeah. fucking stupid. It's just it's it's insane. So, Nobody lives forever and certainly not doing this. So like just well, uh, I'm so so since you want a tidbit of who's at war, yeah. here we go. Fuck you, Kirby. Fuck you. And the genie's out of the bottle. There we go. Oh. Who's Kirby? Big time. Fuck you. <laughs> Who's Kirby? He has me blocked on everything. And like, I went to go look at some <laughs> WCPW stuff and I saw I was blocked. And I was like, what? Who cares? Why would you? Ugh, all right, crazy dude. And then off I went with my life. I was like, he, he's, he's still holding he's a- that grudge. And then he po- this was the thing this was the thing I did see because this was like just a couple of days ago. Um he posted something about like getting over your enemies or some shit like that like or whatever and I was like you're such a hypocrite you weirdo and then like again and then I went back to my life. He's a total <laughs> fucking hypocrite. Um uh, and I'm not trying to steal your thunder. But well, as a that, messy bitch who lives for drama, I'm going to need someone to fill me in on all the details of this later. Thank you. I, I will. Um, thank you, for, thank you, Red. He decided all of a sudden now he wants to run the same night that everyone wants to pay tribute to Mr. Bill. Mm. You're running the same fucking night. Why? Like, why? Like, why? why in, instead, of, instead of being a man and coming and saying, hey, guys, I want to help out, and you know, this I've got I mean. footage. It's I've got all of this. Quarter of a help. century, and you're still like think it's Monday Night Wars, and it's like for real. Like you're crazy. Like just let it go. Like, dude. dude so, so there, there's my beef. Okay. There's my heat. The sickness of indie wrestling. And I, uh, I, yeah. I, I'll say what other folks ain't saying, but some are saying. Uh, but anyway. You're in a class by yourself. Uh, I follow different promotions all over the nation. And nobody's doing this. <clears throat> and the beautiful part is to see the company start to get the recognition they deserve. This is the best, unfortunately, kept secret in Chicago. And it shouldn't be. Won't be for a like, long. like, yeah, dude. Words getting out. That's it, that's another thing that's been happening. A year ago, my email was like doing this. Now it's like this. Like, it's it's crazy. The messages and the emails and the stuff I get. Like, it is night and day. Like what was going on a year ago. So, that's I'm happy with that. Dude, the the way your mind works is beautiful, and and. Um, <laughs> There is, again, like nobody can touch your creativity ever in anything you've ever put your hands on. And I, and again, I said it, everything you've ever done, there has been this borderline insane genius. And it's always come off so great. Everything that I've ever seen you do, do so nice. You're so nice, C. Red. So nice. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he's honest. So, Thank so you. it's it's great. Thank you guys. To know that there is a product that there's only two companies, maybe three, and I won't put the other two out there, but I can say I know. People have to sit down and 
the creative juices have to flow because when I see super wrestlers, it's not a show just thrown together. And I hate that shit. I I hate going to shows where you face you and oh. you face you and oh I want to see you face nah, nah, nah. I mean it is tax return season, so you know that, that, that <laughs> oh that shit that shit's coming. That shit's coming. <laughs> that shit's coming. I that hate shit's it. coming. Um we're about to have like eight feds pop up next month. Oh if uh, we can handle that. Um and they'll be gone by three time. letter combinations. I don't think we can have any more feds like A P F C L M. Like we're done. No more. No more feds. But you people don't know like you're the genuine thing. But I've known you for so long, so I know uh, what you see is what you get, and that's the biggest thing that I appreciate about you. Um, uh, you've never, uh, you've never treated me any different than anybody else. Uh, we've able, we've been able to hang out. We've been able to have conversations. And, uh, the irony is, it's usually never about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but who you are, this, this is Billy Wack. You know, and I hate to think that when the camera goes off, uh, like you just sit there and <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you, I am this like, at 24 seven. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> Billy Wack is on 10 24 <laughs> 7, unless he's probably sleep, and even then, it's probably like, at a 9.5 because uh, his mind is, is steady going, thinking. And dude, I just again, I love always what you've done i love your creativity um uh, i love your circle because to me that kind of speaks to the volume of a person is who you surround yourself with. and everybody i know that you surround yourself with are fucking top-notch people they're all good people you know <laughs> so um and there's you guys I do this now, and I surround myself with you guys. <laughs> we're so, we're fortunate. We feel we feel very lucky to have this time with you. Uh we've we've heard Red uh, go through his shtick, and and you know Red is always very eloquent. Rachel, I know you love the Super Wrestlers. We have been there together for each of them. I'd like to hear you speak. <laughs> well, I won't cry this time. I promise. Appreciate that. Um. <laughs> I'm just I'm very excited to see what the future holds for super wrestlers it's still the best thing I've seen in a very long time it got me through a really really hard year um, and I'm looking forward to being able to watch the story continue without all that heavy weight on me at the same time so just keep doing the amazing things that you're doing Billy of the whack thank you so much thanks you're thank welcome you. As we close, uh, oh, nice. I'd like to sum up super wrestlers in four words. Floor is lava match. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that encapsulates everything that is spectacular about it. Only people with a certain mind would put something like that out there and sell it and have people believe it. And I think in I those do. four words lies the secret and the magic of super wrestlers. Every time I message you and say, hey, can you come on here? You are incredibly gracious and you always say yes. And we're incredibly thankful for that. And, you know, like I said, we we love the super wrestlers and we love to have this time with you uh, to, to chat about it. And you're always very genuine and we appreciate that. Before we let you go, we have talked about this on this show, even when you aren't on this show, because when it happened, uh, we were all affected by it. And I would feel remiss if I didn't mention it because it's part of you and part of your journey and what you bring to us. You, you lost a very close family member since we last spoke. And uh, we all want to say 
we were all saddened and we, we all had the best wishes for you during that. And I, I know maybe it's inappropriate to bring it up, but I was a big fan of that little guy. And yeah. I wanted to put it out there, you know, how much we hurt for you when that happened. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to know, we wanted you to know we care. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Uh, that's that I appreciate that so much. Hey, look, um, Charlie was the one that found the prize in the backyard. I recall that. Yes. So there's, you know, Charlie's going to live forever. Uh, and uh, that as far as a prequel goes, that there is some prequel footage of Charlie finding the prize. So. All right. So we'll end up getting to that someday. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Um, Billy, any final thoughts before we let you off the hook? And let you go do super wrestler things. I do have, I do have a, a thing. Um, so, so we're, obviously the show is Sunday, and then we have right underneath Concord Music Hall. It is our our sister bar. Uh, 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 Rachel, I think you were there. Remember the the sultris or whatever that drink was. Remember we were talking about it. There was a drink. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so what we're gonna do is do like a little mini after thing right after the show. We're gonna go down there. And like, just chill out and talk to people and have a few drinks or whatever. So, um, come chill out and have a few drinks with us after the show. We're just going to go straight. We're going to break everything down, but then we're going to head downstairs. So that is my. Like, An invite oh, to the super wrestling yes. after party. Yes. 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 If, assuming we make it safely through the wormhole. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Billy, thank you so much for taking time tonight. We're always thrilled to have you on this show and you're getting to be such a regular that we may have to start considering making you a jacket like we've been talking about with Marche. I was going to say, Marche, what, he's got like 10 more on me or something he like does, that? He does, but you're you're slowly escalating. You know, as the super wrestlers continue, you know, we're going to call on you and the the legends of the super wrestler verse uh, to keep us up to date on all the ongoings. And uh, like I said, we we love to support you. We we fully believe in what you're doing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're thankful that you've made us a small little corner of your madness. Absolutely. You guys, you guys were like my, uh, uh, my you don't know this, but you were like my mini psychologist going into that first one. And uh, so I was like, hey, guys, what do you think? And you boosted me up. And, uh, you know, so here we are. So thank you. It's like it takes a village and sometimes you don't realize that you're part of it. So I appreciate it. So well, we're just glad to be here. We're just glad to be here. So we're going to let yeah. you go. And then we're going to talk about you when you're gone. <laughs> as, as people in this business do. Fair uh, enough. <laughs> but we will see you this Sunday at the Concord Music Theater, Chicago, Illinois. The shadows of the super wrestlers. Three new characters, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Craziness in without question. Uh, and, uh, you know, a, a hell of a night it's going to be. And we look forward to sharing it with you. Thank you very much, guys. Billy of the Whack. Thank you, my man. Have a good night. Applaud him off. Applaud him off. <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> and there he goes, Billy of the Whack. Uh, you know, he has never had a hesitation to jump on here and talk about anything and everything. And, you know, there are, you know, I, I don't just, I, I reach out to everybody. I have reached out to hundreds of people to be on this show. And I am not always met with, yeah, sure, I'd love to do it. I mean, some people really love to do it. And I appreciate that. Some people are like, nah. So uh, the fact that that was, I believe that's his, been, that might be his fifth visit. Because we had him on before the Super Wrestlers, just as Billy Wack of the LWF. So he has been with us, and we even had him on the gorilla position pre uh, this particular show. So uh, Billy has been very gracious, and we are very thankful. Now, down to business. Well, down to some business. Not a lot of business. We're going to take it easy tonight. We don't need to to go off the rails here. Um, Rachel, I'm going to tap out real quick because Rachel. motherhood. Rachel. Rachel's leaving. Well, when you tap out, we will miss you and we will speak nicely about you when you do tap out. Um, I mean, you better. Got the, we've got the knockouts. It's coming up in March. And it is March, funny, March 23rd. Uh, it, it also is the same night of the Mr. Bill show. Oh, no. Are you missing it? Am I missing the Mr. Bill show? Are you missing the knockouts? 
No, are you kidding me? I would. There's no way I would miss the oh. knockouts. Well, you better I have, wear blue. I have, a, I have a sticker on my computer that says the voice of CKO. So yeah, you are. Having well, been have branded been. with that moniker, uh, it, I will be hard pressed to ever miss it again unless yes. they say, hey, we don't really, we're good. So until that day, I don't think that'll happen. I am going to have. I understand that you're going to have to be at the Mr. Bell show, but I will keep you posted on the next date. I have to. Uh, I I lace up the boots one more time. So. Yeah. And we're not even going to say this goes against your sabbatical because this is a whole different animal. It doesn't. I, you didn't. You have not lost a bet yet. I'm going to give you a. I'm going to give you a flyer on this one. Uh, but not much. Speaking of a, of a bet, I made a bet with my boss and my coworkers that I could go a year without getting injured. So let's hope that that happens. Fingers uh, crossed. You, you got a little dinged up, uh, you know, in February. There. Hopefully, you're ready to go. I got a little dinged up on Sunday. <laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah i got right. dinged up all sunday yeah yeah uh -oh. they uh there was a rock on the on the track and it caught in my skate and i literally flew oh so boy. from like almost like one end of the stage to like 75 percent of the way down you know how big that stage is um it's a big so, stage yeah so um i can go a year without getting without getting injured We'll see, but I'm gonna go speak. See my child now. Love you all. Thank you, uh, Rachel. We'll Hello, see. Hello, Rion. Soon. Goodbye, Rion. <laughs> oh, what about the bingo night? Oh yeah, there's a bingo night. Uh, <laughs> Sound Growler, Hinley Park, Chicago Knockouts will be there. I love bingo. There's nothing I love more than a good drag queen bingo, but I guess roller derby bingo is a close second. I got um, I got so, invited by a uh, punchline. Uh, yes. Oh, punchy invited. So if you like invited. bingo and you like roller derby and you like beer, please come to Sound Growler on March 20th at 7 p.m. There we go. It, just, just ahead of the big bout on the 23rd. Yes. So there you go. All right. Now you can go be a mom. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. And then there were three. And uh, here we go. Um, you know, Red, I'll, uh, I'm going to, I said this, I, I talked about this a little bit last night uh, when I made a little guest spot on uh, the JFW podcast. Yeah, I heard. And, uh, what'd you hear? No, I heard that you uh, was on the show. Oh, I was I was definitely on the show. It was good to hang out with Travis and Turtle. Um, but we they were talking about the Mr. Bill show. And I said, yeah, I got roller derby that night. And you're like, oh, okay, that's too bad. I said, but I was never asked to be a part of the Mr. Bill show. And it's fine. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I have worked for all three of those companies. So I found it, I, I would have liked to have had somebody say, hey, would you like to do something? But alas, we don't always get what we want. And there's always a catch. So that's uh, that. I, I'm doing, I would not have missed roller derby anyway, but roller derby is at eight o'clock. So roller derby is a little later in the evening. Could have come out there and done a few things early on in the show. Just to say I was a part of something spectacular that companies I've been involved with for half a decade are running, but not to be this time around. Maybe next time. Maybe next year. Well, um, I would say don't take it personal. Uh, when I've looked at, like, I'm not looking at the newer guys. I'm really not. For me, I'm more excited uh, to see the people that caught my eye locally and and people that i've grown a fondness for and a love for uh throughout the years so it's historic it's, it is a historic coming together dude of some of these cats have, some of these cats it's not even about the federations dude not not for me well, i said generations not oh, federation. dude when you think that there are some of these cats they haven't laced boots since they left windy city and it's like Wow, like one guy in particular, he lives now in 
Colorado. He's coming in for this show. Like Amazing. it's 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 ridiculous the amount of alumni. Uh well, from what I hear, Red, this guy that the benefit is being made, and, and obviously I I have met him before. I, I knew him. Uh, I did not know him well, but I, I knew him. We have spoken. Um, but to hear you talk about Mr. Bill the way you did, uh, you know, it, it's great that this man is getting this kind of tribute because when it's all said and done, I mean, it's going to benefit his family, which is so important, but I think he would have enjoyed it. And I think that's what I love about it. Though there was again to to watch somebody on TV locally, nationally, it didn't matter. But to watch him and you know, you watch the intro to Windy City. You know, and then you get the commercial, whether it was Capri Pizza or uh, the law offices. And the first face you see is Mr. Bill. And you hear that voice. And you got brought out by Mr. Bill. And it was like, okay. So for me to get brought out by Mr. Bill, like I felt like I had arrived. And I hadn't even been in the business um, probably a few months. And, you know, but to get my name called by Mr. Bill, like that was it for me. Like, you thought I was at WrestleMania. Like, it was it. And again, the guy was just a genuine sweetheart. Like, I love, I love Mr. Bill. So, um, and he loved, I can say he loved us, dude. Like, there was nothing like <laughs> talking to him and just, you know, having a good conversation with him, you know, and realize uh, that he loved what he was doing and he loved uh, being around us and everybody. Like, so again, you know, for me, when uh, this opportunity uh, came about again, you know, it, dude, like, Stick a fork in me. I'm done. Like I'm, I'm marking out so bad that I am putting together a scrapbook of Windy City for my own personal thing, and I'm, I'm sending it out this week to get everything. But because those were memories, um, where my kids, where my daughters, um. Uh, they were at the shows with me and like those type of memories you you have to hold on to you know so uh you know to to know i got in psych <laughs> i got in one of my favorite stories is i got in psycho psycho's face and ripper's face my very first time seeing them i got in their face and i told you know they kept you're such a badass. Get over here and get in the ring. I ain't stupid. No, y'all come to this side of the barricade. Like, dude, for me, like, I am Windy City for life. So uh, anybody that's anti-Windy City, they know who they are. I don't give a damn if you own shit or not. Uh, we 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 a family, we a brother, literally. So uh don't take it to heart, you know, charge it to their heads and not their hearts. That's the best way to put it. And uh it's it's it it's a nice night 
for a good cause for a man that would have appreciated being remembered like he is being remembered. And I think, you know, any anybody, any human being, once they shuffle off this mortal coil, would like to know they had an impact on people. And just how passionately you speak about him and how everybody's going to speak about him as we get closer and closer to the event, uh, it's a testament. And it's something that everybody would love to have happen to them uh, if, you know, when and if they shuffle off this mortal coil. So it's going to be a great show. Uh, I look forward to hearing all about it uh, when we do the Power Hour the Tuesday after. Uh, you know, it'll be great to hear your stories and uh, hear all the things that go down uh, in Kankakee at the Majestic. It's it's a beautiful venue, uh, tables and seats, and, you know, you, you can, it's going to be a really unique wrestling experience. Anybody that goes to that show is going to be fortunate. Anybody that gets to work in front of the crowd they're expecting uh, is going to have an experience like they've never had before. So uh, I, I certainly recommend uh, that if you don't come to the knockouts, you definitely go uh, to Kankakee to catch this because this is really one of those once in a lifetime moments that would be really hard to duplicate. Uh, this is Chicago Wrestling's USA for Africa to a certain extent because you see all the people that haven't been around in forever that are going to be there. And the best of the new are going to be there. Travis was talking about high voltage is going to happen at the Majestic. So some of the, the newest wrestlers that are out there are going to be a part of the pre-show. So, you know, it's young, it's old, it's established, it's rookie it's everything that makes wrestling wrestling is going to happen in one night at uh, Kankakee. And, uh, you know, those three companies are pillars of the industry. Uh, I'm blessed to have worked for two of them directly and one of them indirectly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very cool to see those three logos uh, that I have seen uh, for all these years come together for something so big. Uh, it's history. It's historic. It'll be talked about for a long time. And, uh, you know, it's very cool. So look forward to hearing your stories, C-Red. Uh, we had a little thing in Joliet this past Saturday night. Uh, some things happened to us at Commentary. Uh, some things happened to me. Uh, and uh, it was a hell of a show. Uh, what was your favorite moment of uh, Shamrock Showdown? Was it the arrival of the Black Knight right off of Fortnite? Well, I'm not a Fortniter, so I mean, I get it. It's a cool character, but I'm not a Fortniter, so I wasn't like the kids, those little young kids. Like they lost their fucking mind. Like they went ballistic. How about that crowd for a second? Oh, dude, they were hot all night, dude. And again, normally, did you get green beer? No, I, I that didn't. Man get... bring you green beer? No. Wasn't that his only responsibility that his night? His only responsibility. Pac-Man's lucky he ain't here. Pac-Man, when you watch this. Oh, he knows. He knows. He can tow his ass with us. He was supposed know. to bring green beer. Now, Danger gave us beer. Danger gave us beer. That's why we love so, so So Danger is, is in good graces with us. He gave Maybe us beer we... before that evil bastard Damien Saint took his beer away. Maybe maybe we should replace Pack with Danger. Bring da you know that's a you know what? Just bringing Danger on the Power Hour as a consultant might be a fun thing to do. I think I'm going to talk to Young Sean about maybe making some guest appearances on this show. That would be very interesting. That's a great idea. Um, favorite moment. Favorite moment. Favorite. The signs. Oh, the signs. Oh, those signs. The signs were iconic. They are. They were fantastic. What was your favorite sign? Uh, The one about Chris Logan. The one about, is he going to wear his own, own clothes? Is he going to wear his own gear tonight? So, you know. Uh, I love that them. Was, they sit right next to us, a commentary. Uh, and, we, you know, they hold them right to our face. And we, we, it, we pop live on commentary every time they do it. Can't so, help. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah, that was uh, my favorite. Yeah. Have you seen the just... picture going around of Kaylee on the ropes? 
it's them talking about you know how lovely young Kate Lee's is, and if you zoom down to the picture, there's a picture of the dirt of the dead turtle laying there holding his head. It is one of the oddest photos. It's it's. Kate I Lee saw the picture, but I, I didn't zoom in. And if you zoom down on that picture, and and the fourth mother box blew up turtle, and it's the cover of their of their of their uh. Their current episodes uh, post is this picture of turtle, and I, you, you have to see it to understand it. Oh! And it wasn't even spoken that the picture is not of turtle at all. He just he photobombed it dead because it looks like he looks like roadkill, and it's oh, really oh. really. Go find it. it. It's on the interweb. It's out there. Uh, it's out we, here. We I saw it, but like I said, I I saw it. Was like, ah, and you'll, okay. you'll see the picture. But you got to look real close down by the bottom turnbuckle and you'll just see the little eyes and the little head and he just looks miserable. <laughs> it's so funny. So funny. Um, But, uh, you know, great show. Uh, the main event, as Rihanna has got up there on the screen, very interesting the way things went down in that match. Uh, until the last two minutes, it might be one of the greatest matches I've ever seen at Rocket Pro. Uh, Michaels and Stone fought with unbridled passion and absolute determination. Uh, and it was so interesting and inspiring. And then Damien St. Turtle mucked it all up. And, uh, you know, obviously through shenanigans, uh, Steve Michaels is the new champion. And, uh, I, you know, my, my disgust for Steve Michaels and the way he conducts himself Body slamming news anchors, beating up Kaylee's. There it is. Rion found a picture. There it is. Look in the bottom corner by the turnbuckle. <laughs> Look at the bottom. Look at it. If you zoom that up, Turtle is dead. That that's what Turtle looks like in the in the morgue. In he's a corpse. It's okay. Really funny. And they blew it. And, and Mother Box blew it up. It's huge. And all you can say, and there it is. There. It. Look at him. Look at W. <laughs> That's a dead nubby right there. Uh, so we would like to thank Jamie for that photo. Jamie, and Jamie. Like to thank I don't think Jamie meant to catch this, but oh my God, this should but be. But he did. So, and we like to thank uh, the real deal for uh, blowing you up so everybody can see a dead turf. Yep. That's uh, that's that's what I call that roadkill. Mut teenage mutant roadkill. Hey, so, I mean, you kind of dancing around everything. Um. You were in the ring with the one and only ringmaster. I was. You and Shelly. Uh, and you guys were having a great interview till it was interrupted. Um, and the challenge was put out, right? The yeah, challenge see, was yeah, the pad the challenge was put out, but let's let's you know, even though uh you know he he expounded upon my the my sizable posterior and my love of cheeseburgers, uh that notwithstanding, uh to be in that ring in that building with that man that has meant so much to wrestling in the area, the three rings, pro wrestling blitz, all that it means. To be in the ring with the ringmaster, it was a mo it was a holy shit moment for me. Bucket list stuff to be at St. Joe's Park in the ring with the ringmaster doesn't happen too often, especially now to someone like me. So I was in that moment, and you know he's asking me questions, and I'm like, ringmaster, with all due respect, the idols are the least of our worries right now. The undeniable is running unchecked, running amok, beating people up. You know it it needs to stop, and that's when. Uh, Roth and Roxy decided to make their way out and uh, and issue the challenge. Um, you know, I've gotten to do some pretty cool things. Uh, was in a steel cage match. Uh, I got my ass kicked by Aaron Stone. Uh, I fought the program. I fought the workhorses. Uh, was in a uh, three man match versus Rion and Turtle, who are two of my dearest friends in this business. I stood side by side with you and Rion, uh, and I still have that picture that sits in my room of us uh, tapping out Mikey. 
Uh, so I've done some really cool shit and really unbelievable shit for someone who's come into the business like I have. Um, but never in my wildest dreams did I think I would get challenged, uh, especially in Joliet, to a Texas tornado match with no rules. So I don't know what that's going to mean. I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, I think it favors me, if anything, because it plays to what I do well. Chaos. Don't have to be in the ring. Can run amok. You know, do whatever I need to do to, to get the advantage. So uh, maybe Joe is really, really smart or maybe he's really, really dumb. I, I guess in April at spring break, we'll find out. But, you know, I'm not going there to, you know, he thinks it's all about these belts. For me, that's not even what it is. I don't give a shit about these belts. I want him out of this business. I want him out of Joliet. I want him out of Rocket Pro. And now, because there are no rules, I have my chance to get him out of wrestling permanently. So I'm not, I don't care if I win or lose. I know Shelly might differ and that's okay because we do things for different reasons, but what makes us a great team. But I know she can handle Shell. I know she can handle Roxy. So I'm not worried about Shelly. I don't need to protect Shelly. I was just keeping Shelly away from Roxy because we were trying to, you know, we needed to calm things down because the show needed to move forward. And we were in the ring a long time and we needed to move on with the show. So I'm like, we're not going to kick their ass right now because the fans did not pay to see us do that. They paid to see what, all the great action at Shamrock Showdown. So I held her back to end the bit and end the scene. But at spring break, it's a whole different thing, whole different ball game, whole different attitude. Uh, maybe I get pinned one, two, three, and that's fine. I mean, I've been pinned plenty of times, not worried about winning and losing. What I am worried about is taking that man and beating his ass like a dog, taking him to the woodshed and making him wish he never messed with Rocket Pro Wrestling. And I asked him as he left that ring, I said, do you bleed? And he just looked at me and I said, you will. And that's where we're going with this. So I don't know what it's going to look like, Red. You know, it's not really my cup of tea. I don't know if there's any tea cup that I have in this business, but I'm going to beat his ass within an inch of his life and he can't stop it now because everything's legal. So that's okay. what I have to say about that. I have no plan. I'm going in there like a whirling dervish and I'm just going to hit him as many times as I can hit him and hopefully draw the blood and end the tyrannical reign and and make the idols a distant memory so we can all focus on the real problem, which is the undeniable. Okay. But it's getting worse, Red. It's getting worse. I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh the undeniable are a bunch of assholes. And almost as big of assholes as youth gone wild. It's neck and neck. No, it's not. Youth gone wild. I will say this about them. They want a shot, which they're going to get if um, the final level defend their titles successfully uh, at spring break. Well, we know the main event in May is going to be the three rings, Youth Gone Wild, and either the final level or Kings of the Six. So right. it's going one way, but they will get their shot, as will the three rings. Uh, but, you know, like I said, in April we'll find out if uh, the Undeniable can take down something like the final level. I don't think they can, but... Oh, first of all, the Kings of the Six aren't on the same fucking page. It doesn't matter if they're on they're, the same page, Red. It, if Schultz comes out, if 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 so, Michaels comes out to tip the scales, what are you going to do? But here, here's the beautiful part now. See, the problem is that Saint has been running amok alone. Right? Right. He can't do that anymore. So just like this past weekend with Shamrock Showdown, just like, oh, well, Ryan Matthews is going to pick Maximus opponent. And that was supposed to just be 
undone. He didn't expect Turtle to respond with, well, guess what? If you can do it, I can do it. So Maximus got to pick Ryan's part. So I can't see Turtle sitting back regardless of who interferes and it not be a legitimate win for the Kings of the Six and Turtle not say anything. Now, God forbid they catch Logan Marche on a bad night because it can happen. It happened. And they pin them cleanly. More power to them. But straight up, no, they can't beat the final level. 100% I agree. And two, they're not on the same page. Skyler wasn't there. And I, I said in our commentary, I bumped into death. Like, hey, where's your boy at? Where's your boy? Oh, you know what? I told him either, more or less, he told him to shit or get off the spot. One of the two. And then he told him, you know what? Don't worry about it. When he knew he had a match that night. So what happens at spring break? Does Skylar feel some type of way? I guess we'll find out. The tempers are cer certainly flaring, and they will continue to do it. Uh, I still think there's going to be issues between Shaq Jordan and Gunner Brave based on the way that match end. I, I don't. I don't. I, it was a simple accident. It was an accident. Uh, I don't know, Red. It there was an accident. Footage and I think something transpires. But maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe they can make it through this. But, you know, we know in this day and age, you know, opportunities for titles and things of that nature are so hard to come by. And, uh, you know, but Gunner's he does, but think about it. Gunner doesn't, Gunner has the briefcase. He doesn't need to eliminate somebody else. But what, to, if to Shaq, keep going. what if Shaq realizes that Gunner's got something he wants? And what if there's leverage applied where Gunner, is called out and decides to put the briefcase on the line. I mean, anything can happen. And we all know the generational treasure is a very shrewd individual indeed. Oh, we we know this and we know Gunner is crazy as bad shit. Crazy. So I'm not saying a match could not happen. I would hope it would not happen. Because the way I saw it, and I was sitting there, it was an accident. I get it. Again, it's that art thing. It's how you you interpret it. Gunner you interpret it one way. Gunner, Gunner doesn't make many mistakes and doesn't create many accidents. So we'll see. Agree to disagree. Uh, there are your two main events for the upcoming Spring Break show. Uh, the Dream Breaker gets his rematch, and... You know, I think that's fair, but I think also I would like to have seen Koa get a shot at Michaels based on what happened in their number one contenders match. So, uh, you know, I, I agree, I, but I, just, I think um, Koa should should get his hands on Devin first. Well, that's he me. Get his hand that, on that's Devin me. Spring break. Well, he can't, but I'm just saying for me, yeah, because. When it was all said and done, it was Devin that kept putting or hurting on Kaylee's. And he didn't have to. She was she was laid out. She was hurt. You know, and what kind of man, you know, oh yeah, I'm just gonna keep kicking and leg dropping and, and dollar stop on Wolverine. This dollar stop Wolverine, man. Dude, that was my favorite moment. That was my favorite moment when the crowd said, not Hugh Jack. 
Yeah, that was good. That was good and, stuff. I mean, it wasn't the crowd a, is really it, spirited in Joliet. It, it wasn't people. like five or ten people. No, it was everybody. It was the crowd. It yeah. Was like yes. Uh, so big things happening, and big things happen at Shamrock Showdown. Uh, that have set up big things for spring break. Make sure you're with us. Uh, spring break is not the first Saturday in April. It is the second Saturday because Rocket Pro does not want to infringe upon your desires to watch the two nights of uh, of the one show that's on Peacock. So you'll get your bloodline fixed, and then you can come to, to Rocket Pro. Mania. You can say Mania. We won't get sued. We won't get sued. But that's okay. I'm not even. I'm not willing to take the chance. Um, before we go, this Friday night in Highland Park, uh, the debut of the new territory for the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, it's called Arrival NWA Chicago. It's the beginning of this territory. Now, Red, you know, obviously being NWA yourself, uh, how many NWA territories are there right now? I know there's the one that's in Atlanta, right? There, that that's one of their territories. I believe one's in Ohio. There are, I can't tell you exactly how many, but there are. They're slowly popping up. Every so and um, Chicago, uh, you know, is kind of the natural choice. I mean, the man that owns the company, uh, is Chicago. I mean, I don't know, you know, I made I made a post today on social media before the uh before the shutdown uh that says, you know, this show is going to rock maybe not as hard as the Pumpkins at the Metro circa 1993, but pretty close. Um Billy Corgan and Chicago are are synonymous. So the fact that NWA Chicago is here uh, has to be a passion project of his because this is home for him, or at least at one time it was. And, you it's know, it, it's a hub of wrestling. You know, Chicago area wrestling is big. And when other wrestling companies that travel come to Chicago, the crowds come out and represent. Uh, you never see an empty seat at the Allstate Arena uh, you never see an empty seat at the places the other other companies go. Um, so it was just, I think it was a natural progression that NWA branch out and bring a territory to Chicago. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, I get to work with a lot of the people that I work with on the regular. Lily and Iniestro and uh, Rafael Quintero and uh, Mario Pardua, who I haven't worked with in a minute, and Ryan Matthews. Uh, and the BOZ, Steve Boz, these are all people that are going to be on this card in some form or fashion. And then you get uh, your Ricky Morton Juniors, you get your EC3s, you get your Kenzie Pages, you know, uh, your your Trevor Murdochs, you know, all the stars that you love that NWA bring out mixed with the Chicago flavor. So it's really going to be a hell of a night in Highland Park. And one of the feature matches, your boy, you managed Mario Pardua. He is getting a shot at the 10 pounds of gold. Mario Pardua versus EC3 is uh, know, right? one of the feature matches. Uh, you know, local local kid made good. Uh, the Polish powerhouse taking on the champion. Going to be a hell of a match. And it, it, it doesn't stop there. Uh, you've got the BOZ, the superstar. The man has been wrestling for what, 25 years? Going on Something 30, like perhaps? And the BOZ is synonymous with Chicago, hence Chicago style wrestling. And he's got his match against the Thrill Billy. Mm -hmm. So that that right there, you know, sets up to be a, a showstopper. And this is for the NWA National Championship. So that's not one title match. That's two title matches. And if that ain't enough for you, there, there's another title match. As you have the the women's championship, the NWA women's title on the line, as Kenji Page puts her title on the line against Lily La Pescadita, uh, a CSW staple. You know that is a, a, three title matches with three Chicago superstars getting an opportunity to collect title gold 
at NWA. The stakes are high. And it's going to be a hell of a show. Uh, Inestro got the news uh, that he is going to be facing uh, the very sinister and very controversial Joe Alonzo. That Whoa. is going to be a hell of a match. And more match announcements will come as we get closer and closer to Friday. Um, you know, it, it's it's super cool that I get to be ring announcer uh, for this. There's another there's another one right there. Uh, that Daisy Kill. I mean, you know, I I have been working on and off with this guy for you know six years now, uh, and and he is going to be in action. You know, so much great stuff is happening Friday night in Highland Park that if you are in the area or even not, come on out. It's a TV taping. It's at a studio in Highland Park. You know, seriously, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. And the matches are going to be unbelievable. So, what say you, Red? You you have been NWA. You know the power of the 10 pounds of gold and all that BC has been doing to make NWA a premier company in the hierarchy of wrestling what say you about it uh first of all this is a wonderful opportunity uh for chicago uh, that now uh we are part of the revitalization of the territories right uh, so for us to to be a part and you have to understand it. Uh, I'm sure this decision wasn't made lightly um, because there are other places, but they see value in Chicago uh, and in the talent, especially that is in Chicago. Um, as far as this Friday goes, uh, sorry, people see red will not be in the building. Um, but Steve will be in the building. Um, everybody needs to bring their A plus game. Uh, you are going against, as you you already put it. If you didn't put enough pressure on these young men and women, um, nationally televised, they are now on. Uh, the CW. Uh, I know they're on the app. Um, so the streams are now uh, crazier more than ever. Uh, and people will see them. And this can catapult somebody who has never, like God forbid, Think if Mario, just by chance, is able to put EC3's shoulders down Friday night. He would be the NWA champion. Like, oh my God. I mean, the 10 pounds of gold. It's a and story, I'm, and story it, is a legend. And they can have it again because it only takes three seconds. Think about all the people that have held that belt. Flair. Dusty. It just it goes on and on. Race. I mean, it's 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 a ton. So uh I just again compete or not compete, but uh repeat what you said that if uh people are not busy uh this Friday night, if they're in the area or not even in the area. Uh, come out uh, to Highland Park. Studio uh, One is the place. It's a beautiful uh, studio. Yeah. Um, I I love it. Uh, it's it's big enough where everybody. Uh, there's not a bad seat in the house. And you come out, you see some great action, but you also get to support our local superstars against national superstars. And again, this is pro wrestling. 
anything can happen. Three anything. seconds. Anything. Anything. It's going to be a great night. I'm looking forward to to being there and, and witnessing it all firsthand. Uh, it's it's really cool to be able to do it. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, bucket list stuff. You know, ring announcer for NWA Chicago arrival, the very first event. I get to put my name there. Who is the ring announcer at the first NWA Chicago Territory show? Me. That's why I just uh, it's hasn't even sunk in yet. It's amazing and great and beautiful and scary. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how I know it's important because it's on my mind and it's got butterflies in my stomach. You know, you want to be great. You want to be the best version of yourself because, you know, you're going to be seen in a different way under a different light. And all of these people, Yanestro, Mario, Lily, Daisy Kill, even, uh, Ryan Matthews, Quintero, even the BOZ, who's been doing this in some form or fashion for decades. It's a different light for all of us. And it's a it's a really cool thing. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but we're going to cut this short tonight. Now, this is not the usual two hours that we usually go. And we're not going to do that because we're coming back Thursday. So you're getting two power hours this week. And we're going live. And we're going to be at Rabid Brewing this Thursday, Rabid Brewing and the Hot Rod Daddy Andy podcast, uh, there's a major announcement that is going to that's going to impact wrestling uh, in Chicago uh, in ways that I can't even calculate. So we're very happy to be. We're asked by Rabid and by Andy to be a part of this and to do the show there. I have got my questions for uh, Rabid ownership, and it's going to be a huge announcement that is going to shake, rattle, and roll the industry one more time. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, Red, will you be on Zoom at least for a little while? Yeah. So Red will be on Zoom. Uh, Rachel and I will be in attendance. Uh, Rion may be in attendance. Maybe he'll be via Zoom. Pac-Man might be in attendance, might be on Zoom. It all depends. Uh, but we're going to be there and we're going to support Andy. We're going to support Rabid. And uh, we can't wait to hear an announcement that is going to shift the landscape supposedly. So very excited to be it. We will see you Thursday night uh, once again, uh, you know, on the interweb. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. We'll have some beers, have some laughs. It'll be it'll be fun. Uh, next week on this show, uh, we have the return of uh, the owner of Frontline Pro Wrestling, Bulletproof Ben McCoy, joins us as we are getting ready for Call to Arms uh, that is next Saturday, a week from this Saturday. Uh, so Ben will be on the show to talk about all the things that have happened since we talked to him last as we go forward to Honor Bound. Uh, I love Ben. I love working for Ben. Uh, ben is one of the greats, and he will be on this show. So special Power Hour Thursday. Next week, we have Ben McCoy. Uh, thanks to Billy Wack, the Super Wrestlers, is this Sunday uh, in Chicago, Concord Music Hall. Uh, doors, I believe, open at six. And the show is at seven, I think. I could be wrong about that. Well, there's information all over the interweb about it. So come on out to the Concord Music Hall. Walk through that wormhole with us. Uh, Kevin, uh, Nuke will be with us. Uh, I imagine J Beck might wander and amble around. I'm picking up C Red personally. I'm playing Uber for Red that night. Uh, we're all going to have a good time. We encourage you all to come out and say hi. Uh, the Power Hour will be well represented. There, Rian's got the graphic. Can I see it? Yeah, 6 p.m. doors. It's a 17 and over show, so leave the kiddies at home. It's for you, and you deserve a night out. So thanks to Billy Wack. Thanks to C-Red. Thanks to Rian Skills. Thanks to Cactus Rachel. Thanks to Pac-Man, wherever he is. And thank you for watching. And we will see you. Thursday night from Rabbit Brewing. Until next time, this is the Power Hour signing off. Good night, everybody.